page, which I want something other than Facebook page because I hate Facebook. For, that, for now, that's all we have. Um, so it's Thursday night, all day Friday, and then Saturday morning. And it's going to be good because you're not only going to be trained, you're going to witness God heal people. And it may be you. You know, you may be the, uh, one of the people getting healed. And we do want, I want, um, every Sunday, you know, uh, people to be healed, saved, and delivered in this space. That's my that's my goal. That's my agenda. That's my watch my Bible hold this agenda. You know, it's not just the, the word, uh, the gospel is not just in word, but in power. And so church should never be boring. Amen? That should be the other teacher. Church should never be boring. So Lord, we just thank you for Susie and we pray that you would anoint her as she comes to share that you bless her spirit. Thank you for what you put in her and thank you for what will come out for open our hearts to receive from you today. In Jesus' name. So, if I'm just sharing and the pressure's off, I use the word preach and the pressure's on. I feel like um, uh, I'm talking about the blood. Yeah, I'm speak about the blood. blood. And um, I feel inadequate. But I'm not because I am a daughter of the Most High God and I'm covered in the blood. Woo! <laughs> yes, absolutely. And I've had a little experience too <laughs> in the past <laughs> three and a half years or so. Um, so, who here likes to feel stupid and feel doomed? <laughs> um, I don't like feeling taken in. And, um, you know, you could say sometimes it's pride, but, you know, in general, we don't want to be dummies. And um, so, so I think a spirit of pride and cynicism can come into us um, in, our, in our not wanting to be too. So we don't want to be them, and that's fine. Um, growing up, in the church was a good experience for me. I grew up in a Baptist church, and um, my parents were new believers, and I feel very blessed that I grew up in a little Baptist church, and then later a big Baptist church. But even as a kid, I remember feeling cynical and kind of like um, offended that people talked down to me. Um, and and uh, you know sometimes I enjoyed the little church Sunday school song, and sometimes I felt kind of like this is dumb. And um, and sometimes in worship I would feel like reverent and like this is real, and then sometimes I would think this is dumb, this is dumb. And I would, and, and and the song um, uh, Father Abraham for many sons um, or. Um, I'm the Lord's army. Yes, sir. Yeah. And, and actually, it's very true. You are in an army, and you are giving more share of that. Um, the way it was presented to me was like, I'm the Lord's army, and I go to church in my color of color page, and little old ladies give me candy. And that's it. Oh, oh, yeah. And you can buy your bread, and you're broke. That's another song. Um, those are good things and they're great songs. But I didn't I didn't believe in them. And I think I didn't believe in them because I just wasn't in the battle and I didn't see anybody else really in the battle. Although I know that the adults around me had their own personal inner battles of growing and being sanctified. Um, and so so that kind of stayed with me. I think the spirit of cynicism and skepticism. Um, and pride was kind of with me all my life in the church. And um, and then when I did see people doing battle, like prayer nights and stuff like that, I could also feel kind of skeptical, like, oh, well, it's not really, I don't know, they just drink a lot of coffee and they're like kind of high energy people or something, and they want to like, you know, do prayer. So so these are all of my cynical thoughts and confessing to you that were wrong and I should not think that way. It's prideful to me. Like I'm pride, prideful not to be duped, and then pride, so prideful that I, I couldn't benefit from um, from prayer and um, and people who more than me. 
So um, I was three and a half years ago. Uh, my information changed and my experience changed and my eyes are opened that um, we are in the Lord's army and we are doing battle and it doesn't matter. And the reason my eyes were open to that was because um, somebody uh, asked me to mentor them who is uh, a satanic ritual abuse survivor. And, um, and these people exist. And, um, you know, there's, there's regular abuse. There's all kinds of more regular abuse than there. there's sitting there ritual abuse, and it kind of takes things up a notch. And, um, you yeah, know, it's been around for forever, though. Like, it's been around as long as since the fall of man, prolific evil. Because evil doesn't have like, a limit where it's like, yeah, I'm going to do this because I'm going to be bad and I hate God, but, you know, there's my limit when I'm going to pass that because that would be like, whoa. <laughs> you know, like, evil doesn't have like I'm going to stop here radar. It just keeps going and going and going and going. So um, as long as man has been alive, um, evil has been um, spiraling. So uh, this person came to me and told me that they were satanically virtually abused. Well, she didn't know. She didn't know she was satanically virtually abused. But um, it started coming out with her story. I started putting pieces together and memories. And um, thankfully, thank God, uh, not only John Van Wagner, but another man um, who will be here next week, were in our lives and knew about this stuff. And I knew that they had like, oh, they have like healing prayer ministry. Okay, that's cute. Healing prayer ministry. I mean, I'm sure it's not. I'm sure it's more than cute. You know, like, you know what you're doing, but I can't comprehend. Like, you pray with me. Their problems go away, or do I have emotional healing? Like, oh, that's good, I don't understand it though. And then I went to um, John Van Wagner and had my own emotional healing and and had an encounter with Jesus that really um, changed my heart and softened me in a lot of ways and delivered me from the spirit of anger and other things. And um, these men um, knew about the kind of virtual abuse, they knew about the type of abuse that people can go through. And the evil that they can be exposed to, and they were kind of there as a sounding board for me. Um, but we have, they have, they still are sounding board for me in these past couple of years. So um, they um, would give me. Uh, sometimes we would get stuck. Sometimes I was praying with this person. And I would feel like there is a roadblock and we get stuck. Um, oftentimes, most of the time, the Holy Spirit would step in as I was praying over a memory. Um, and the Holy Spirit would step in and he would just show me what to do and how to pray. And then sometimes, um, John and Charles, I would call them or text them and they could help me. Um, so, going back to you know, like those. Kind of those Sunday school kid things that you memorize. Um, like, I'm in the Lord's army, yes, sir. And, and all of a sudden, I was really in the Lord's army. And I needed like some weapons. I needed, I needed, I needed some tips and tricks, you know. <laughs> but, um, but they're not tips and tricks. They're things that have been around for the ages. And um, they're tools and they're weapons. And the most important tool is the blood of Jesus. The most important covering, the most important thing you have is the blood of Jesus. Um, but the song, um, I, I don't know, you were singing it, love, 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 blood, 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 love, 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 blood, love, blood. I don't remember the rest of the song, but I remember <laughs> those over and over again. And it's interesting because I, I was thinking about the blood uh, before this morning, and I was thinking like, the, like I'm thinking of the verse, the grace of Jesus is love. If you don't, you know, if you have this and that, you've got all the fruit of the Spirit, you've got this and that, but you don't have love, then you don't have anything like your ministry is 
what's, what's the point if you don't have any love behind it? <coughs> and the same is with the blood. Like, you don't have the armor of God without the blood. You don't um, have any right to put on a helmet of salvation or a breastplate of righteousness, and you don't know what truth is. You don't have the blood in your life. You don't have the blood cleansing you and purifying your heart, your mind, your body. And the love, love, love is the greatest of these, and the blood, blood, blood is your covering, and it's going to equip you and give you the right to become sons of God, daughters of God. It's going to give you your right to have an inheritance. It's interesting because, like, the Bible says a lot of things about blood, and I've, I've thought of this topic before, and like, how do you connect the dots? Um, like, I've often thought, just like, why blood? Why? Why blood? Um, I was taught at one point the difference between Abel and Cain's sacrifice was that Abel gave sheep the sacrifice blood and, um, and Cain's wasn't good enough and, and um, I don't know if it's true or, or true or not. I think, I think that's true. And I mean, God requires the blood, he's always required a blood offering. Um, and then before that, in the garden, um, they, when Adam and Eve sinned, they were kicked out of the garden and God killed the animal. So they were trying to sew fig leaves together before the Lord appeared in the garden for their clothing. But vegetation is enough. When you sin against God, blood needs to be spilled because you separated yourself from him. And you, you, you have died in your sins. And you need, you need life. There's life in blood. Um, and so to, to be clothed and to not be naked, they needed more than 50s, they needed animal skins, so blood was shed. And they had to put on like life from another thing that was living. They had to be covered in that. So um Yeah, move away from that. And there was always blood poured out in sacrifices in uh, Genesis and Exodus. There was blood. Um, one thing that's important is you never drink the blood. But other people did. Our God is different. He covers us with his blood. And he doesn't want us to drink um, so the bad guys do. The bad guys drink blood, and they always have, and they still do. And you know, we just pray in the new year, blood was spilled on James first. And I don't know who's blood, but I can guarantee it blood was spilled, and was spilled by bad people doing bad things. You want bad things. And they're seeking power. And they are getting power by the bad things that they do. But even though they're doing really bad things and they're getting power, they're not more powerful than God and they are not more powerful than the blood of Jesus. Amen. And this has been a huge tool in helping and praying and learning how to pray. It's been a journey to learn how to pray. It still is. Um, it's been a huge tool in praying against curses, assignments, generational curses, and covenants, rituals, oaths, and then there's blood oaths. There's all kinds of weird, evil, bad, 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 bad. Bad, bad, bad things that people can cause. All types of weird, bad, 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 bad 
cocktails that people make to try and get power. And they do get power. And they get big scary power. But it's not bigger, it's not greater than the blood of Jesus. And if you have participated in all of these things, and if you if you've thought up some of these evil cocktails and you've participated in them, the blood of Jesus still covers you and it breaks the oaths. It breaks the blood oaths. It breaks the covenants. It breaks the rituals. It like breaks the generational curses. Um, I think sometimes we have to dig in and see exactly what needs to be broken. And I, and I don't think that's because the blood of Jesus is weak and you have to have like the right formula. I think it's because Jesus is teaching you. And he wants you to figure it out. And he wants you to know. Um, he wants you to be aware of evil. He doesn't want you to like have to study it, participate in it. But he's allowing you to get glimpses of it so that you can see you can see how good this is. Amen. And and you can come you can fight against it. And so um, the blood of Jesus. Um, it's also a doorway. It's, I'm sorry, my thoughts are scattered around, but anyway, it's also a doorway. Like when you, um, when Jesus had the Israelites put the blood of the lamb over the doorposts and over the top post, like um, yeah, you're just you're covered in the blood of the lamb. That was another picture of um, the angel of death. Who was killing every firstborn in Egypt? I think even the firstborn of the animals. And it skips everybody in Goshen. Everybody who had the blood over their door. And this was just a picture of what to come. This wasn't even like Jesus' blood yet. And like our God protects us in his blood. Other gods demand the blood of innocent ones. So that they can gain power and do bad things. Um, so uh, I don't know. I think that um, one the the main point that is probably um, going to be most helpful and that Carl had in his mind is just that um, the blood of Jesus has come through for me. And it's come through for um, this person who I mentored, who is a satanic ritual abuse survivor. And since then, I've met other satanic ritual abuse survivors. And other just, you know, people who've been severely, severely abused. And the blood of Jesus is, is that doorway. And it's like you enter into the blood of Jesus, and suddenly healing can begin to take place. And we're rescued from death in the blood of Jesus when we stand in that doorway. We come under the blood of Jesus. Um, it has shown up in ways where um, well, when somebody when somebody is ritually abused and they're young. Um, this is like a proven psychological thing. People's minds split, and um, your brain can create other little personalities. So, you know, there's multiple personality disorder, EID, dissociative identity disorder. Um, and I think there's probably other ways that our spirits fragment um, our souls, or our, I should say our souls, right? our mind, and our emotions, and our heart kind of check out. So another part of this can step forward and experience the abuse so that when we come back, we can, you know, the, the survivor can live a normal, a fairly normal life. And um, the, the blood of Jesus is there for those parts as well. Um, the blood of Jesus is there for every piece of your spirit could have been fragmented, and the blood of Jesus is there for every part of your mind and your emotions that has been fragmented, and maybe even fragmented to the point where it's been dragged off in some form to um, to a hellish place on earth, but it can still be covered by the blood of Jesus 
and the blood of Jesus can come in and just break curses for these parts of your your mind and your emotions and your your ordered heart. Um, and when these parts come into alignment under the blood of Jesus and come into agreement, um, people can heal from multiple personality disorder and dissociative identity disorder. And yes, I did just say that. <laughs> they can't heal. <laughs> these are things that are like, you know, diagnosed things that can't be cured, whatever. I'm not a doctor, and I am saying it, and you can't sue me. So I think that that wraps up all of my jumbled thoughts about the blood. I hope some of that is useful to you. I hope some of that you can like, grab onto because if you're covered in the blood, you have a sort of spirit you can grab onto. This stuff is real and it uh, it changes your life, it changes the way you do life because you're doing battle. So I just want to pray a weird prayer over everybody. So Lord, I thank you for the blood. I thank you for the mysteries of it. And I thank you for the beauty of it. I thank you that with your blood, you purify us and you cleanse us. And we don't need anything or anyone else to purify or cleanse us. Because what you do is good enough. You heal. You uh, alter DNA, you heal DNA, you create DNA, um, and you are the, the author and the finisher. You're the beginning and the end. You're the Alpha and Omega, and you you see us all. You see us. You see our needs. And Lord, we just pray that you will teach us how to pray. Teach us how to pray, Lord. Teach us how to um, to walk in the authority that you've given us in the blood of Jesus. Teach us how to walk in the authority and to know who we are, to know that we're sons of the Most High God and that we're daughters of the Most High God. Teach us to walk in your ways. I pray for um, for a uh, anointing, Lord. I just pray that you will anoint anyone in this room who has any type of splits, any types of altars or fragments. Lord, we pray that you will begin rushing in today, that you will bring in your blood, which is once spilt and, and was good enough, and that you will begin um, purifying and softening and um, and healing. Lord, we thank you for your blood. Thank you for the healing. We pray for our healing today to come in through your blood and in just really deep places, deep places of our spirit, deep places of our emotions and our mind and our body, and awaken us, Lord. Awaken us to these deep places that need healing and, and just bring your blood, Lord. Purify us and um, help us to know that you are safe you are safe for us, and you want to deal with the darkness in our souls, and you are safe. We can be safely dealt with by you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Yeah, let's, uh, let's give Susie another round of applause. Here. <laughs> that was bigger than it looks, you know. Like, uh, I, I didn't really imagine Susie even agreeing to that a few years ago. And, uh, you know, like, um, just I praise God for you, Susie. And, uh, and, you know, everybody in here, this is what we want. We want everybody in here to have a fire in them to, to do something, you know. And I think, like, to talk about the blood. Um, you know, like Susie said, the blood is never lacking in power, but sometimes the death angel is coming and the blood of Jesus is sitting in the bucket instead of over the door. And you know, like, because every situation is different. You know, we, we face new things every day, new things come across. And do we face it with the blood or do we face it with the old, the old person? You know, the person that, uh, are we facing it in the flesh? You know, are we dealing with it in the flesh or are we pleading? the blood of Jesus over it, and actually applying the blood of Jesus to the situation 
And like I said, of the, with this woman that I was praying with, um, these specific things matter. The way you pray matters. The way you, uh, you know, um, how you pray matters. Like the person that says, Lord, um, please heal this person, <coughs> is not going to see healing as often as the person that says, I command healing in the name of Jesus. There are like rules to the universe. There are rules to the way things work. And when I was praying with this woman, at one point I started praying in tongues. And uh, she would, or the demon, and it was like, you know, it was really, was really thrown off by that, and it was like, stop praying in tongues, you're going to set her free with your tongues, and I'm just like, thank you, Jesus, you're making it tough, you know, like, so I just prayed more in tongues, and like, you were, you're given these tools, you're given these tools for a reason, and, um, and learning to apply them is, uh, is everything, you know, um, and so we want, we want a testimony here today, so, uh, Lord, I just thank you for the blood of the covenant. Thank you for the blood uh, of your cross, Lord. I thank you for the victory. And I thank you that every person in here, uh, Lord, that your uh, full victory is applicable to their lives, Lord. And every person watching today, that the blood of Jesus is applicable to your life. The blood of Jesus was shed for you. And it was shed for you because God loves you. God doesn't love you when you become a Christian while we were still sinners. Christ died for you. And the blood of Jesus is available to you. But the question today is, will, will you apply it to your life? Are you walking in addiction? Are you walking in anger? Are you walking in rebellion uh, because uh, of unhealed wounds, because you haven't forgiven? Um, today, you can be set free. You don't need to live with depression. You don't need to live with suicidal thoughts. You don't need to live with resentment and bitterness, which is causing some people to be sick. It's tying you up the knots. Today, you can be set free. There's one qualification to forgiveness. In order to be forgiven, you have to sin. And that may sound wrong. I'm not telling you to go sin. The truth is, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But if you don't acknowledge that sin is sin, you can't be forgiven from it. In order to be forgiven of something, you have to acknowledge that it was sin. And so uh, today, there's, there are some people watching, there's some people under the sound of my voice right now, you know that God is talking to you about something that you need to give up, somebody you need to forgive, and you need to say the words, you know, just like applying the blood of Jesus is, is by the word of their testimony that we're saved, and it's um, by the confession of our mouth. And so some people today, you just need to name the person that hurt you, you need to name what they did to you, or you need to acknowledge the wrongdoing, you need to forgive and bless them. And that is applying the, Je the blood of Jesus, because when we forgive and we bless somebody, we're not saying that what they did is okay. We're not saying that at all. We're saying that Jesus, as the Bible says, who bore our iniquities and carried our sorrows, carried the weight of the wrongdoing that was done to you himself. He paid for it. He fixed it. He didn't say it doesn't matter. He said, I will fix it. I will pay the penalty for it. And so we're simply letting Jesus carry away what he already paid for. So Jesus, we today, we renounce sickness. We renounce bitterness. We renounce anger. Lord, we renounce uh, addiction. We renounce the, um, the counterfeit comforts, Lord, television, uh, smoking, um, Secret sins that we go to for pleasure, a way to escape, a way to comfort ourselves. Though they are idols, we just confess that to you. And if this is you, just need to agree with me uh, wherever you are. Just need to agree in your spirit. If you can say it out loud, say it out loud. But today we renounce, Lord, the um, idols that we've set up in our hearts, the things that we go to for comfort um, that are not you and they don't please you. Lord, we renounce those things. We separate the, ourselves from those things. We repent, and Lord, we ask right now for the forgiveness, and we thank you for it. We plead the blood of Jesus over our lives. If you're carrying today um, pain from a, from a traumatic event, if you're carrying emotional pain, um, maybe that's fear, uh, then I want you just to say, Lord, I give you my fear. Please take it from me. Heal the wound in my soul. I receive your healing. And in place of fear, give me courage. So Lord, we thank you that you are 
uh, moving in our hearts and our lives right now. Lord, I just speak boldness over our community. Ask for a spirit of worship to be released in us, Lord. Ask for a spirit of evangelism. Lord, forgive me for the fear of man. I renounce the fear of man, Lord, and I ask for boldness to reach out to people all over the place without any concern for what they will think about them. So Lord, we ask for a release of boldness. We ask for, ask for a release of spirit of prayer. We ask for a spirit of holiness, a spirit of gentleness, and a spirit of love to fill us, Lord God, and to fill our community. We thank you for your blood, Lord. We come underneath it today. Release us from all sickness. Release us from every curse. In Jesus' name, and Lord, make us aware of the specific things that need to be addressed in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, for your provision um, in Jesus' name and for the food that we're going to eat. I pray to bless our fellowship. And I pray, Lord, for people here that uh, God has put in your heart ministry. Uh, the children, maybe to a prison, but you have done anything like, Lord, about it. I ask, Lord, that you help our feet to move today, to begin to meet some of the harvest grace, for the, the harvest that you said is plentiful for the laborers. Feet. So we bless you, Jesus. We glorify you. Thank you for what you've done, and thank you for what you will do. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. So, uh, Jessica, would you uh, go fetch the pizza for us? Will it be ready? What's that? Will it be ready? I think it will be. What, what time is it? 11.45. Oh, 11.45. Well, we're a little early. I think it'll be ready. Yeah. Thank you. Thank um, you. So, just uh, Wednesday night, we are having worship practice. If you want to be part of that, this come, we're still going to eat my shed for now until we, until we're busted out of it. Um, but uh, the more the merrier, you know, the stronger, the stronger will be. Um, uh, like Lydia mentioned, Thursday evening, Friday, Saturday morning is the healing training, healing, emotional healing training. And next week, Charles Young is going to come, as Susie mentioned, and he's going to teach about dissociation, uh, which is. Uh, what Susie was talking about, when we experience traumatic things, and it doesn't have to be a, it doesn't, you don't have to have been a survivor of satanic, um, organized ritual abuse to have altars. Many people have altars from traumatic things that they've experienced. It's going to teach us how to recognize it and how to begin to find healing from it. It's going to be pretty deep. His, his wife is also going to come who has experienced both dissociation and healing. And so it's going to be a pretty powerful uh, demonstration. Um, so I encourage you guys to come to that. I uh, think we'll open all of our eyes. That's it. So I uh, hope you guys hang out. We're going to have a piece here in a short time and just uh, fellowship for lunch. So. <laughs>